What are you doing? Uh, I think you should say hi. Yeah, Let me introductions. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm Dr. Ben Quist. And I'm fitness expert Jeremiah Kruger. And today we're going to talk to you about the butt wink. And how to fix it. Let's fix it. <laughs> oh, no. oh, we're getting to that age. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about the butt wink. What is it? Well, first of all, this is what it looks like in an actual squat. So a butt wink is a fun way to describe a posterior tilt that's happening at the bottom of a squat. So there's actually a few reasons we don't want that posterior pelvic tilt at the bottom. One of them is that it causes your glutes to relax at the bottom, which means that your glutes can no longer contribute to your squat, i.e. you'll have a weaker squat, and you'll also get less gains in the glutes from the squats you're performing. So the second reason that Jeremiah and I do not like the butt wink is it gives you a much greater chance of getting injured. So just like with a deadlift, if you're coming down to the bottom of the squat, you start to post your tilt at your pelvis, you're going to create flexion at your lumbar spine where you don't want any motion there and that's going to give you a much greater chance of causing a lot of the injuries we've talked about in previous videos, like lumbar herniations, bulging discs, all the nasty stuff that you don't want happening to your lower back. Long story short, we don't want the butt wink. Don't do it. Here's how to fix it. Don't do it. All right, so first things first, there's three main possibilities of what could be causing your butt wink. Either inflexibility in some certain region, weakness in a certain region or muscle group, and or lack of motor control ability to perform the exercise the way it should be done. So when you look at these three different categories, one way to think about it is you could rule out two of them. So if you knew for sure your core is really strong and you know for sure it's not a neuromuscular issue, then it's got to be muscle length or vice versa, if you rule out muscle length and neurological control, then you know it's gotta be core strength. So that's one way to kind of figure out and tweak which of the three areas you're weak in that's causing the butt wink. First, we're gonna talk about muscle length. Well, first we need to check to see if any of the muscles are tight that would impact that butt wink. The muscles that we're gonna look at are the glute max, the gastroc, and the hamstring. There are more muscles that possibly could be an issue, but those are the three major ones that we're gonna check first. To set up for this, you're gonna lay onto the ground or onto a mat table, you're gonna take your hands, you're gonna put them underneath your lumbar spine or lower back, which is gonna create a spine neutral position. And then throughout the entire test, you're gonna to try to maintain the same level of pressure, which is just a very light pressure into those hands as we move the leg for the glute max test, which is the first test that we're gonna be doing here. So I'm gonna take Jeremiah's leg, I'm gonna bend his knee to 90. And then wherever you squat, meaning as far as at your hip position, either being a little bit out, or if you're someone that squats with your knees in line with your hip, do this test in the position that you normally squat in, and then you're gonna bring your leg back towards the body, seeing if you can get to the depth that you go to at the maximum depth of your squat without creating any pressure change in your hands. And if you're able to do that, that means that your glute max is probably not too tight and causing you a butt weight. There is a more advanced test that you can check what position you should be in that would be the best for you for squatting. Jeremiah and I will cover that in a future video. So the second area we're gonna look at is the hamstring. This one is really easy to test. Same thing as the glute max test. Hands are gonna be underneath that lower back, so you're maintaining that spine neutral position. Same level of light pressure into the hands through the entire test. You're gonna take your leg, you're gonna bring it up. Foot is gonna be in a neutral position at the ankle. Knee is gonna be straight throughout the entire test. We're gonna raise that leg up and what we wanna see is that you're able to get to minimally roughly 70 degrees from the floor, but 80 degrees, or Jeremiah is pretty flexible, so look at this, look at this guy. How could a guy with this much muscle go this far? Look at this man, oh my God. So he's at probably close to 100 degrees of um, distance from the floor with his leg for his hamstring test. So if you're finding that you're only able to get up to 45 degrees or you're only able to get to 50 or 60 degrees, a tight hamstring might be impacting your ability to do the squat movement appropriately. Okay, so the last muscle length test that we're gonna be looking at is one for posterior muscle tightness in the back of your calf area. So those would be your gastroc and soleus muscles. What you're gonna do is take off your shoe. This is best done in a sock or barefoot. You're gonna take your toe roughly four to five inches from the wall surface. And then what you wanna see is, can you dorsiflex at that ankle enough to easily touch that knee to that wall in front of you without having your heel come off at all. So if you find that you go forward and your heel starts to pop up off the ground or you just are unable to get that knee all the way to the wall, that calf complex might be restricting you from performing a proper squat. Now we're gonna go over three exercises that relate to core strength and the butt wink with your squat. 
Our first one is the zombie squat. I'll show you that here. All right, so this is your setup for the zombie squat. You wanna make sure that the bar is evenly placed on your shoulders. You're gonna to get to your normal natural squat stance and I'm gonna squat down about as deep as I can, maintaining core position. Faults you might see are the bar starts to roll down my arms as I'm going down. This means that I'm not stabilizing my trunk and my core as much as I would like to be. And that may indicate that you have a weak core, which is obviously something that you're gonna to wanna to fix so that you can squat better. So what I would suggest is that when doing this exercise, you might use it to master the movement and get as strong with it as you can, or use it as a consistent warm up before you do your back squats. And that way you can prime your core so you can squat much better. I would keep the weight relatively low if it is a warm up exercise or a priming exercise, but this is definitely something that when you master, you can lift a pretty heavy weight with. Here's a little easier move. This strength move is called the three point pause squat. And what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna pause at three different positions in the squat, the top, the middle, and the bottom. The pauses can be one to two seconds in length. So pausing at the bottom, pausing at the middle, pausing at the top. And at each of those pause position, you wanna take a look in the mirror and see how are you looking as far as your spinal position and your alignment through your joints. So you're basically practicing and giving yourself time to master those positions and check. As you're going through the range of motion, if you find a spot where you feel like it's difficult or you're having problems maintaining position, spend more time pausing in that spot. You can always add more spots that you're pausing. Here's a really tough exercise. It is called the Kang Squat. This is going to test both strength and motor control. So it combines the movements of a hip hinge or a good morning, which you then turn into a squat at whatever your range of motion or depth is. You then turn that back into the bottom of the good morning and then straighten all the way back up. I would say that you need to make sure, no matter how much weight is on your back, that you can maintain your spine neutral position so that you do not get hurt throughout this movement. The benefit of doing this movement is that it teaches you to keep your core engaged and your spine in neutral at multiple different points in movements that are very challenging to do so. All right, so if you have determined that muscle length is not your issue, and that muscle strength is not your issue causing your butt wink, then it leaves one other thing. It's probably a motor control issue. So we have two different moves that we're gonna show you that are gonna help you ingrain that proper motor pattern of a non-winking butt, non-winking butt squat happening in your workout. All right, so motor control exercise number one is the bird dog. This is a really good exercise to help practice your motor control and proprioception, specifically for your hips and lumbar spine. The exercise starts in a quad position, hands down, knees down, knees under hips and hands under shoulders. What I'm first going to do is protract my shoulders to fill in that space up top by my shoulder blades. I'm going to raise my left leg and I'm going to raise my right arm. The first thing I want to be aware of is this hip right here. Oftentimes when we have low proprioception awareness, that hip tends to be elevated and rotated upward. So the way you begin progressing this exercise is understanding where your body is in space, getting your hips in line and we would start with a hold. Over time, as this hold becomes less and less challenging, you might start practicing the motor control aspect of movement, where what we don't want to see is spinal flexion and extension throughout the movement, but we want to be able to move our arm and leg without any change occurring in our spine. And if you have bad proprioception, you might not notice that you're doing this. So it would be helpful to record yourself and watch it back, maybe look in a mirror or have a friend watch you to make sure that you are not having any sort of flexion or extension faults in your back. For our second motor control practice exercise, we're gonna practice squatting while holding your spine in a spine neutral position. So your pelvis doesn't just flop around like a fish out of water on a dock. No one wants that, okay? So for this test, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hand onto your lumbar spine right in that nice neutral curve of the back. And then you're gonna squat down, really sensing with your hand, is there any positional change happening and I can get down to right about 90 degrees at my knee and I'm starting to feel that I'm starting to flex there. So since I typically only squat to 90 at my knees, I can motor control down to that point. But if you find as you're squatting down at any part of the motion, you start to feel, feel movement there, that's where you need to have that practice of trying to keep that pelvis rotated back into that anterior tilt as you're coming down and not allowing it to flop forward into that butt wink. So you're using your hand to kind of sense what's happening in that area and practice making sure that you don't have it weeble wobbling. For those of you that these exercises helped, that's awesome, keep it up. It's gonna make a big difference over time. And for those of you that these didn't help, 
lower the weight, maybe decrease the range of motion, and keep practicing. The squat, especially the back squat, is the king of all exercises. It is very difficult to master, so don't expect to pick it up overnight, and don't expect that you've been doing it right your whole life. It's okay to back off and relearn this skill to perform it more effectively so that you don't get hurt and so that you get more out of it. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, like our channel, like this video, and please comment below. We wanna hear about what you, things you guys wanna see. So if there's something out there that the world of fitness or health you'd like us to cover, just comment below and let us know. Have a good day. Have a great day.